Hey, it's Jim, and this is level three of the CFA program, a constructed response set on the topic of derivatives and risk management, covering learning module one, which is option strategies. We'll look at all or parts of four LOSs. As you read that first one, you might be tempted to think about put call parity, where we can rearrange that formula so there's only um, there's only one asset on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and we can create some kind of a synthetic portfolio. But what we'll see here today is, um, of course, you can use put call parity, but there are easy ways to replicate a stock return. So that'll be, uh, that'll be that first LOS. And then look at the second and third covered call provision, uh, position and protective put position. So what are these things here? You probably know this back from level one. The covered call strategy is that you write the option and the worst thing that can happen is that the stock price soars. So what you do is you go out and buy the share of stock so that you put it in your back pocket. So when that option expires in the money and the owner of that option knocks on your door, uh, what you can do is you can just reach into your back pocket and say, okay, here's that share of stock. So it gives you kind of peace of mind. I mean, think about it. If you don't have this, this is a, if this is an uncovered written call and the stock price, uh, let's suppose the exercise price is 100, stock price goes up to 250 or 300 or $400. Think about what has to happen there. If you don't own that share of stock, you've got to go buy it on the New York Stock Exchange, come back and then deliver it to uh, the owner of that option. Uh, that's a lot of stress and a lot of travel. You don't need all that. So peace of mind on that covered call. Now, the protective put is kind of just the opposite. If we want to turn that on its head here, we own the share of stock and we're worried about prices falling over that short term. So what we do is we layer, we layer that ownership of the underlying asset with a put option. And what that does is it establishes a floor under which the value of your portfolio cannot go. And the uh, that floor is always the exercise price of the put option. So you can imagine that we'll have to draw some graphs for covered call and protected put and answer one or all of those questions in there. And then we'll have a final question on the delta of an option in relation to the delta of the underlying asset and how that impacts the delta of the portfolio. So let's look at the case Green Tech Corp. We have an investor, Scarlett. She owns 400 shares, currently trading at $50 a share. And she's thinking about two strategies, covered call and a protective put. So the details of the call exercise price of 55, just one month. And remember, the covered call and the protective put, they only last, those strategies only last until the option expires. Premium for this call option is $2 per share. Uh, if the green tech stock price rises from 50 to 51, so that's a dollar change, the call price rises from $2 up to 250. That's probably that last LOS for the Delta. And remember, the, the Delta, don't you learn this in kindergarten or fifth grade? Delta is really just a measure of a change. So just that kind of underlying definition that you learned long, long time ago really helps our understanding when we get to Black Scholes Merton and we get to the binomial option pricing model, then the delta has a more specific meaning uh, in, in those two models. All right, the protective put, uh, strike price of 45, there's one month, premium is $1.50. We're given something about delta as well here. Green tech stock price falls to 49, the put price changes to $1.70. So once again, we have a dollar change in the stock price, and then now we have a 20 cent change in the put price. And so just like back here, I didn't read that last sentence yet, additional income while still holding our shares, and then uh, maintaining the potential for upside gains. Also interested in establishing a forward position that will effectively replicate. Uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. So what we wanna do is pick, <laughs> one of these calls and one of these puts that replicates the performance of blue wave stock. We'll do that at the very end. So here are the questions. Question one, maximum profit, maximum loss, break even. Same thing over for the protective put. Question one, cover call. Question two, protective put. Question three, there's the delta. And then question four, go back to this, uh, this table. All right, you ready? 
So this is what I said earlier. Imagine that we're going to have to draw some graphs. So let's do this real quickly. So with the covered call position, let's start with the long stock. So of course that's linear relationship, right? So we have, you know, dollars on the horizontal axis, profit in dollars. So dollars on price on the horizontal axis, dollars of profit in the uh, on the vertical axis. So there's that linear relationship for the long stock. And then the short call, um, we've got that little break point over there at the uh, at the strike price. So the uh, short call, you know, you go like this, right? You guaranteed some kind of profit at lower re, uh, stock prices and then you lose. And this is what I was saying about uh, you know, having to run to the New York Stock Exchange to buy that share of stock. So if you add the linear thing and you add the linear, then a kink and then another linear, then you get the uh, the straight line of the covered call. So the dotted lines, they reflect the two individual components of the portfolio. And then the um, full line, there's the covered call. So the question then becomes, what do we ask to do? Profit, loss, and break even. So there are the details. Let's do the maximum profit here. So that's just going to be the regular old difference between the um, exercise price and the stock price. So 55 and 50. So that gets us down to $5. Plus, remember, we wrote the option and back here, uh, there's the premium of $2. So we generated that $2 worth of income. So if you do 55 minus 50, that gets you three. And then, uh, I'm sorry, that gets you five. And then uh, add the two, get you seven times the 400. There you go. 2,800 is the maximum profit. Maximum loss. Well, if we bought, what did we do back here? Let me go back here. We bought 400 shares at $50. So that's four times five. So that's two, right? So that's $20,000. So the worst we can do if we own the share of stock is lose $20,000. But we wrote the option and we got $2 per those, per $2 times the 400. So that's 800. So the most we can lose if the stock price falls to zero we lose $20,000, but we get the $800 back from writing the options. So there's the uh, 20,000 minus the 800 gives us the 1920. And then the break even point, this is just super simple. Just take the current stock price today and then move to the left, go over uh, $2, the option premium. So you get $48 a share. How about the second question on the protected put? So we've got a similar graph here. Notice this we're long on the stock. So we still have that linear, that dashed line going all the way up to the right, but then long in the put option, right? The protected put. So what happens is that we win when we own the put option, we win if stock prices fall. So that's why we go up and we hit the vertical axis and then out there above the exercise price, you've got, you know, that uh, that guaranteed loss of the premium. So let's go ahead and work through the details. Maximum profit here. And this is one of those. Uh, I mean, you know, the you know, the idea here. Oh, I didn't say the combination. So there's our line. The orange line goes from, you know, if you if you add the two dotted lines, you get the orange line and then all the way up. So so the protective put position. Um, all you can do is lose the option premium if the stock goes to infinity. And so this is what I was saying. This is one of those things that uh, really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, you never open up the Wall Street Journal and say, oh, stock price for Jim's construction company is uh, is infinity. But so the answer there is is unlimited. Not sure you need to go ahead with the uh, the infinity sign, the, the sideways eight there, but that should be uh, that should be an easy calculation. This one here is a little bit more complex. All we're going to do is we're going to do uh, take the difference between the stock price and the exercise price. Remember, I was telling you that's that uh, that's that uh, floor and then add the premium because uh, you're paying, you're buying the you're buying the put option. So you have to add that 150 in. So what's the math turn out to be there? Two six two thousand six hundred dollars. And then uh, the break even is just the stock price plus that uh, cost of the premium. So fifty one dollars and fifty cents. 
All right, how about uh, determine the delta of the covered call and the protective put? So we need to break these covered calls and protective puts into, down, into its two assets. So the delta of the stock position, that's uh, plus one, right? So go back to this graph here. So that's why it's the upward sloping dotted line. We can go back here, it's the upward sloping blue dotted line. So that's gonna be, where am I here? Plus one, so for 400 shares, that's $400. Uh, let's go ahead and compute the delta. What were we given back in that, uh, one of those sentences in there? What, what were we told? Geez, I'm going way, way back. <coughs> so for the covered call, if the stock price, which is 50, rises to 51, that's a dollar. Put that in the denominator. If the call price is, what is it, $2, it goes up to 250. Gosh, I hope I'm not giving you a vertigo going all the way, where am I here? So put that in the numerator, so 50 cents divided by, 50 cents divided by a uh, dollar, that gives you 0.5. And remember, you're writing the call, so it's a, you gotta put a minus sign in there. So the delta for the 400 shares is a minus 200. Let's do the same thing for the protective put. Uh, it's gonna be a minus two since we're uh, since we own the put and so i did the math there for you there's just dollar 70 minus a dollar 50 so that's 20 uh, divided by a dollar so there's the delta for the 400 shares minus 80. so if you put all that stuff together you get the net delta for the covered call is 200 net delta of the protective put is 320. Now let's think about initially to answer this fourth question, let's think about put call parity, but then let's throw that out. So we're still gonna do the same kind of a concept with put call parity, but all we need to do is to uh, find two options that, a call option and a put option, that expire on the same date and have the same exercise or strike price. So only two of those options fit. So in order to establish a synthetic long forward position, so remember that term, synthetic long forward position uh, is just like owning the share of stock. So we're gonna buy the call, $45 exercise price, June 15th, sell the put, $45 exercise price, and uh, June 15th again. So buying the call gives you that, uh, uh, that benefit of upward movements. And then uh, selling the put gives you the same of exposing uh, oneself to those potential losses there. So if you add those two dotted lines together, you get the uh, effectively replicating the payoff of the blue wave stock. All right, what did I say earlier? So we did this, this was pretty good stuff. Really, uh, really focus on covered calls and the protective puts, and then go to those other, you know, 15 or so extra questions uh, at the end of the learning module, and that'll give you complete coverage for this learning module. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Good luck studying.